Hi, I'm Timothy Maurice. I'm a behavioral psychology author interested in human behavior, how people make decisions, how people think about consuming ideas, products, and a leadership journey. And I have the extraordinary privilege of coming in hijacking Mr. Veli Indaba's studio. Veli, what's up, bro? How are you? Thank you very much. I'm very well, thanks, Tim. Yeah. And thank you for coming through and just hijacking my, my studio here. The reason why I decided to come and hijack his studio is that Veli is scripting a chapter of his career that I find really fascinating. In my research and being curious about human behavior and the brand, I come across really interesting streams of thought and really powerful new narratives in the neuroscience and human behavioral space. And we are going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the work that Mr. Veli and Dabo, Mr. Neuroscience and Engineer himself, the work that he is working on now. So Veli, let's hear a little bit about how neuroscience, you merge neuroscience and engineering to come up with this fascinating work that you're doing now. Yes, no, thank you very much for, for that wonderful question. You know, here we're talking about the Velindaba Neuroengineering Leadership Effect, which is hashtag VNNLE. So what this is, uh, it actually centers around both my personal story as well as my skill sets. So when I talk about my skill sets, I'm talking about my skill sets of understanding engineering as well as neuroscience. So when you look at neuroscience, and which is which still is more about um, the the brain and the nervous system, and you look at the en engineering, which is about the inner working of things, if you take both of these skill sets and you combine them, and they give you neuro engineering leadership effect. So which I call it the Velindaba neuro engineering leadership effect. So when you look at these both, this is like the discipline that I apply in leadership and that I apply in changing leadership cultures because this is exactly what is happening out there because the brain when you look at it through neuroscience the brain and the nervous system it responds to the environment around us yeah. so when you look at the cultures when you look at what's happening around us it actually affects how the brain works so this is something that's very important that we understand because when it comes to leadership and we talk about leadership cultures they are both the things that are happening to us that we need to be able to change. So it means to change what's happening around us, we need to focus on the brain as well as to look at the environment and apply the engineering techniques through that because the brain is such a complex machine yeah. that needs to be understood. I mean, you've got a fascinating story yourself. And I think what I like about how you apply your personal story yeah. to leadership, helping yes. people go from dark, biased, really confused ways of thinking to lighter, abundant, yes. promising ways of thinking. Yes. That fundamental shift is very unique. Yeah. And I want you to shed a little bit of light by telling us a little bit about your story, how you went from a dark place to a place of light to get to this point where you can share your work at such a high level. Well, you, you know, when it comes to my story, I'm just a simple boy that was born in Soweto and I, I, I was born in this family that didn't have much but they had a lot of love and, and this is the love that actually kept me going and my siblings and through the challenging times and, and when I tell my story I always like to contrast it to 1994 because 1994 was the era that actually brought uh, um, that brought some some you know some hope you know that brought some light and when you look at that and 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 i i contrast it and, and break it down into 12 years you know in, in 12 i mean segments of 12 years when you look at 12 years before 1994 that's when i had a challenging time you know i had those periods i mean in my life where things were very difficult because i lost my 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 my, my father you know, while I was still trying to recover from that, then I lost my mother, then I lost my brother. And when I look at how... All in 12 these, years. All in 12 years. Wow. And this actually plunged me into mental darkness. Mm. And that's how I found myself just struggling, you know, in that darkness. Because anything could have actually happened. And that's when I started, like, losing some, some hope. You know, that's when I started losing, you know, like, like my future. But... 
I had to find something to do this, I mean, to work around that. But what's important is that that 12 years, just before 1994, just before that, you know, new dispensation, I was in the mental darkness. Mm. I, w- I was doing things, but it, it could have gone wrong. Yeah. And I could have actually lost everything. Many people have committed suicide. I could have, like, it's, it could have buried you. Like, like you say, that it could have actually buried me. Yeah. When I look at how, how I actually went through that, it wasn't easy. But I must really say that that was the first 12 years. And came 1994, I mean, it brought hope. I mean, we saw Nelson Mandela coming in and telling us that, I mean, like, you know what, you have, you are the master of your fate. I mean, you are the master of your destiny and that you need to take charge of what's happening. And also you need to forgive because I had gone through a lot of things that could have actually got me trapped in terms of losing forgiveness and forgetting about it. So the second 12 years now, it actually helped me to start working on myself. You know, hearing those words of hope. Because when you look at Africa itself, I mean, when we are, as we are here in Africa, Africa is about light. The, the definition of Africa is about sunny. It's about bringing hope. So when I looked at that and then I looked at what Nelson Mandela was saying and what was happening at the time, everyone was hopeful of a brighter future. And that's when I started just to start working on myself step by step you know i always talk about small simple steps you know you you just do that stuff you know little by little until you get that like someone who said that big shots are little shots that kept on shooting Mm. so for me i started working on myself it was very difficult you know starting now to learn how to, to to forgive starting to accept myself for 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 who i am and who i was at the time so there was something that was challenging so the second 12 years up was about me just picking myself up taking it step by step moving myself from mental darkness into mental light and then came the other 12 years but before you go that, to this to, to the third 12 years yes. what i like about this is that the environment influences the individual yes. and I think every leader needs to rec- recognize this is that you've got to be thinking about what is your 1994 yeah. maybe it's a cultural shift yeah. maybe it is a leadership team that's highly diverse it has a lot of women on it yeah. you know or it has you know young people contrasted with old people but maybe shift in the environment your 1994 what is the thing that's going to inspire your team to find hope in themselves and that's what I like about your story is that in that 12, second 12 years where you started to find light little by little, it was seeing light in the politics, seeing light in yourself. I mean, you were studying, you were learning as much as you possibly could about the brain, all of that stuff. Here comes your third 12 years. Yes, now the third 12 years, because the, the second one, I was still trying to find myself. Now, the third 12 years, that's when I started like developing myself getting to learn more about the human behavior, Mm. getting to understand this complex machine that we call the brain. And that's when I started just looking at how I can actually be able to use that with uh, combining that with my other skill set, which is engineering. And this is something that really helped me to start to see that, you know, we have the power to change our lives because it was during that period that I started writing my first book. Uh, You are born to win. I started, you know, like going out on stages, talking to people, preaching about hope, you know, inspiring people, because I started to realize that you have the power to change your life. You can move from mental darkness and also leadership darkness into mental light, which also we talk about leadership light in this instance. So this is something that was very important. So the third one was about me now starting to unleash my power and now getting to understand and using my past you know, just sharing that with people to say, you can move from mental darkness. That Because I was speaking and doing that from the place of truth and from the place of experience. You weren't just talking. Not just talking, because <laughs> there are many people. Talk is cheap, Tim. And most people are so easy to talk. I mean, you hear so many people who are saying they're motivational speakers. They wake up the next mm. day, oh, this is what happened. But to me, I always say to people, what's important is that don't just talk inspiration, but be the inspiration. Don't just talk motivation, but be the motivation. So when people look at you, they must just see hope. They must see light. They must see the motivation. They must be inspired right away. Based before on you truth. open up based on truth. truth. Yeah. So that's something that's important. So the, the second 12 years, therefore, after 1994, has been for me just developing myself and sharing this light and just 
helping people understand that it's possible you have the power you can move from mental light from mental darkness into mental light you know i, I want to make sure i mean i didn't plan to do this but i really want to take us on the journey of your publishing yes because i think this is very important yes. you mentioned your first book yes. born to win because yes. i think we need to let leaders know how you got to this point where yes. you're about to publish some really fascinating insights in this in this latest chapter of your career. But take us from born to win to where you are now yes. from a publishing perspective. From a pu publishing perspective, when I wrote the book, uh, You Are Born to Win, it was actually birthed <clears throat> out of that that, that thinking out of that discovery that you have the power we have the abilities we have all the the nutrients we have we, we have all the ingredients but ours is just to be able to combine them and be able to use them to our advantage and with that I started to realize that and people started buying books and started you know getting to understand that because I was writing about it I was just you know like speaking about it and there it was and people could read about it and, and from there, I started to realize that people were in this mental darkness, that they didn't really real, I mean, I realize that they were born to win. Then I started just talking to them about the dream that is calling them. Because without a dream, there's something that you are actually missing. The dream is that, I mean, that, that, that picture that you have of, I mean, in your mind. And that's the second book. That. That's the second book now that, that your dream is calling you. Okay. That's what I said. So, so it was birthed out of that dream because the dream is something that keeps you out. You know, when you're down and you're feeling like you're down and out, and then you're just thinking of this thing, that if I were to do this, my life would be in a better space. Then it keeps you alive. So I said, your dream is calling you because we all have dreams. We all have desires. We all have this thing that we want to do. Now, after doing that as well, that actually realized, it made me realize that, wow, <clears throat> I could do this. And there was much more that I could do while helping people as well. I was getting help myself because when you do something, that's when you realize the power of starting. When you start doing something, so now we're at the third book. Now we're moving to the third book. The third book is Switch On, hmm. which was Switch On Your Personal Power. Because you may, born, you may, you are all born to win. We all have dreams, and you find that sometimes people are switched off. <laughs> so you need to switch on your brain. That's why now the brain stories also started coming in because hmm. you've got to switch on your power. Because I normally say when you walk inside the dark room. And then it's got everything inside. But if it's off, if the lights are off, you no, will never see on. it. You know? And that's so, what I like about this is you went from not even realizing it. You went from getting people to switch on the light in their brain. Yes. And now you have arrived at this point. Incredible. Continue. Yes. And, and that, and just to keep going, because that, the, there are some, some certain things that I, get, I got to learn from engineering as well. Like engineering taught me these four things, which I applied here. They t engineering taught me about structure, the importance of structure. Know what you want to do, know what you're about and what you're not. And then number two, it taught me about system. The system that you're using must be very clear because you may have a structure, but if you don't have a system, then that system, is just, that structure is going to collapse. And then the third thing, you need to have maintenance. <clears throat> it means you may have a structure, you may have a, I mean like a system, but you need to maintain it. That's why you get people to say, I'm losing weight and they lose weight. And afterwards, they don't know what to do. They just fall flat. Mm. So because they didn't have the maintenance system. So you need to bring in the maintenance system. So for me, to bring in that maintenance system, after writing these three books, I had to keep people going. That's why I wrote the fourth book, which is Set Your Soul on Fire. Mm -hmm. which is more inspirational, getting them, reminding them of the power that they have within. So, and then the fourth one is innovation. It means reinvent yourself. This is now the path that I'm actually on, where I keep on reinventing myself because you don't want to be irrelevant. No, 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 no. You don't want to get stuck in the past. And that's, I think what's encouraging about your work is starting from your story, a place of authenticity, mm -hmm. building yourself into a person who is capable of starting to explore, realizing what you were born for, and then going, let me into that dimension of mastery, that high level of mastery. Yes. Now you're building products for high level leaders, yes. people to conquer and shape this society. Let's talk a little bit about the fact that people often underestimate that everybody 
No one is excluded from going into this dark place. Yeah. And every leader needs to know that. And you believe that every person that walks into a room needs to be fundamentally aware. And every leader needs to know when they look out on their team that everybody has potential darkness in their life. And their single job is to bring them into a level of light so they can see where they're leading them. Tell us a little bit about how leaders can apply this thinking yeah. before we wrap up. The way that leaders can actually apply this, because it's very funny that you mentioned that. You know, as a speaker and as an author and as a, you know, like doing what I'm, what I'm doing, I come across so many people and most of them are in this mental, you know, darkness. They are smiling, you know, and, and we, we have mastered the art of putting this facade. Put a mask pretending, on. I'm telling to put a mask <laughs> on and suppress our feelings because we've been taught, you know, I, we've been socialized as well to say, no, 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 you've got to, you know, appear strong. You've got to be strong. I'm fine. You know, I'm fine. You know, even if you're not fine and many people are not fine. And unfortunately, they take that situation, that mental I mean, chaotic state into leadership. And you find that you are leading people, but you are so broken inside. You are in this dark, dark space. And so... This application of engineering and, 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 and neuroscience it helps leaders understand themselves better in terms of how the brain works and how they can be able to apply this also in their spaces. Because if you're not clear in your head, if you're not clear in terms of what affects you negatively, because if you're in an environment that is actually dark and the environment that upsets you, and that triggers some brain chemicals, your neurochemicals, neurotransmitters that are related to stress. And once you are stressed, unfortunately, your thinking brain, your prefrontal cortex as well, it stops to work because it's like a seesaw. It works like a seesaw. When you are too emotional about a situation, your thinking brain, it stops working. It doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. But when you're in an environment that is encouraging, that is making you happy, then you become so creative because you're happy. And then happy neurochemicals or happy chemicals are released as well in the brain. So how do we therefore create that kind of environment? Because leaders have the power. They determine the culture of the, I mean, of the workplace. So they have the power because others, they just follow. So now when you use this neuroengineering, I mean, like when you look at uh, the, 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 the neuroscience, which is understanding of the brains and the neurons and that, but th that, there's some complication in that. Or th that works like a complex machine because when you look at engineering, now we apply engineering now in understanding how these connections, you know, using neurons are connecting or are, are formed between because neurons are they actually are we call them the information highways in the brain because they they help you to connect these different brain regions you know these diff different departments in the brain so it means as a leader you have the power once you understand that then you can be able to unleash your power and also play at the highest level yeah yes. you know the the ability to simplify this to apply this to culture is something that you thrive in we yeah. want to celebrate your journey and I am enjoying the idea that you are innovating and evolving your own personal brand. Before we close, I want to know, what do you want to be known for? At the end of the day, once you've left the big company, once you've left a big audience, once you've left working with people, when people see you on the street, they should go, Veli Indaba is. Veli Indaba is the light. Valindaba is that guy that will be able to help you move from this mental darkness into mental light. I'm committed to help leaders, I mean, throughout different sectors, different industries, I mean, the government sectors, the private sectors, I mean, throughout Africa. I want to help this continent move from the place of mental leadership darkness into a leadership light. So whenever people see me in different settings, they must just see the person, they must see the guy, the Velindaba that brings the light, the light guy. This is what I'm bringing with me. So whenever they see me, they must see the light. They must see hope. They must see possibilities. Velindaba, thank you. Thank you for bringing light, especially when you come from a background where you've experienced so much trauma, you've experienced so much darkness, and you can bring a publishing journey where you inspire people to know they're born to win. And now you arrive at this place where you're helping people understand the technical neuroscience and the engineering components of their mind to help them lead at the highest level. This is the type of leaders we need 
in this country. I'm Timothy Maurice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tim.